Time to really get started now. I apologize for the miscommunication. I was just trying to get everybody a chance to get here 15 minutes before we started. So, um, I hopefully everybody got my email regarding that too. Uh, we do have this room reserved for also November 3rd and November 17th, same time slot. And we are welcome to use it if we need it for additional meetings. Um, they're very gracious to have us uh, or host us in here. Um, also, well, I'm going to call the meeting to order first. I guess I should do that. So at 6.30, we're officially called to order the October 20th Raytown Charter Commission meeting. Lisa, would you take roll call, please? Jim Major. Here. Ted Bowman. Here. Susan Dolan. Janet Emerson. Here. Lisa Emerson here. Jason Green. Here. Steve Gunther. Here. Sandra Hartwell. Here. Michael McDonough. Here. Charlotte Melson. Here. Mark Moore. Here. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Here. Greg Walters. Greg is absent. Okay. Um, also, um, we'll now open this part of the meeting up for public comment. If anybody would like to make public comment. Randy? Michael? Anybody? Okay. All right, so seeing none, we'll go ahead and continue with uh, officer's report. I'll continue as for the chair. Um, I did um, get the RFP for legal services sent out. Uh, it's been in Randy's paper. I think it should have also been in the Eagle, uh, and it's going to be also in next week's papers um, so that the advertisement follows in along in the guidelines that we're required to do. Uh, I've also talked with, uh, hey Greg, Mr. Uh, Markison from the MML, as I mentioned in my email, uh, I got three uh, attorneys' names from him directly, and I, uh, I've talked to each one of them personally on the phone and sent them a copy of the RFP, uh, and they're all three uh, appearing like they're going to be submitting their the request in. Uh, in talking with Mr. Marcus and also he um, uh, graciously volunteered to review our charter draft before we actually give it to the attorney so that if there was anything glaring or something that we needed to include or maybe make comment on we could make that happen and so I thought that at no charge oh, by the way just to let everybody know he he just volunteered that service, and I thought that was very nice of him. Mr. And, yeah, Mr. Markson. And um, so that, I mean, I think that all went really well. Um, and hopefully we'll get some more responses besides those three. I mean, I think I sent everybody the uh, final RFP. Um, and so if there's attorneys that you know that you think would be interested in um, uh, giving us a response that would be greatly appreciated uh, to get that out to them and um, I know Greg you vote uh, you uh, asked to sit on that uh, subcommittee to review those and uh, Sandy I think uh, in our conversation you thought you would too if there's anybody else that would like to uh, Mary Jane thank you I will okay I mean yeah uh, now what that's going to do is, if say if we get six or seven responses, we'd probably like to narrow it down to two or three, and then uh, make recommendations to the board to have them come in and actually do an interview with us, so that we can uh, everybody will have a chance to ask questions to those attorneys. Yes, Mary Jane. I think the city has some kind of a, a website or a, something they use where they post uh, jobs outside of, uh, of the city. Have you talked to Teresa about I, possibly posting there? I talked to Teresa. She doesn't, well, um, well, we can we can see if we can get it posted there, yeah. Uh, she didn't seem to, um, she seems to think that this is our deal and not so much the city's, and so to get them to do too well, much. I talked to her, she sounded like she would. Well, and it was sent to her. To, <coughs> So that she could post it. So uh, I will. I'll contact her tomorrow and, and make sure she knows that. Um, but everything seems to be going pretty well there. Um, and then uh, when we get into 
old business will go forward from there. So, um, yes. There's a, a magazine that MML puts out, and in the back of it, it has different jobs that different cities need to have filled. I don't know if they're going to put it in that or not. But uh, Mr. Markinson didn't say anything about that, but I can ask him if but if that he only goes out monthly. So I'm thinking. Oh well, we don't. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. it's too late. We don't okay. Know. okay. Okay. All right. And they usually have a month yeah. ahead before. All right. Yeah. Yes. I have three so far. Three. Yeah. How do they get their application to you? Um, no, I haven't got any response back from them. Oh. Uh, Mr. Markison gave me three names. And I contacted all three individuals and then talked to them and then sent them the RFP so that they could respond to it. But we haven't gotten anything. Well, where do they respond to when they do? Who? Where? It ah. goes to the, to the city offices and is reserved for the Charter Commission to pick up. The RFP's got an address and everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Seen them, could you forward them on? Yes, once we get all of them by the due date, then we will put them together. And yeah, yeah the seal note has to be opened, yeah. and then they'd be opened by the subcommittee and reviewed. Right. Yeah. All right, um, secretary's report. Got minutes. Nothing. Minutes. Other than the minutes. Yeah. All right. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? I know there was one update to them. Does anybody see any other corrections? Seeing none, we'll take a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion. We approve. Thank you, Janet. Second. Thank you, Jason. Take a vote. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Lisa Emerson, yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Charlotte Melson. Yes. Ja uh, Greg Walters. Oh, well. Ted Bowman. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Chim Azure. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Any update on the Treasurer's report, Mark? Well, I've been behind the times here, Steve, so I think it's still the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think any money. I don't think you have. Well, I might have spent a little bit with Randy, but not much. Or something. Yeah, just to get the advertisement out. more than that, but not much. And then, uh, so, seeing that it hasn't really changed yet, we'll, we'll leave it as it is. We'll leave it as it is. Um, old business, we kind of discussed that. I gave you updates. Is there any other old business we need to talk about before we get started? Uh, the only thing I can think of is um, the um, uh, six individuals that um, wanted to get together on the marketing committee. Uh, I'd like you guys to, um, in the next couple weeks, maybe have your first meeting so that we can start getting that organized. And I think I sent all six of you documentation from um, West Plains, what they did for marketing. Did can you list who's on there? Charlotte, you are on there. Uh, Janet Emerson, Susan Dolan, volunteering, Michael McDonough, Sandra Hartwell, Charlotte, myself. Um, and so. Yes, great. Do you have room for one more? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, that would make seven. So that would well, count. Susan's on there. Yeah, Susan's on there. So mm -hmm. we can substitute you for Susan at this point. Thank you. All right. So again, I guess that would be Janet then. Uh, Emerson, Greg Walters, Michael McDonough, Sandra Hartwell, Charlotte Melson, and myself. Well, um, that's up to the group. I mean, uh, is there anybody that would like to chair that position or that group? Janet? All right. Thank you. Um, can you then go ahead and try to find a date that everybody's comfortable with and then we can get our first meeting? At whatever. I'm sorry? Let the whole commission Yeah, let the whole commission know. Yeah. Not during the royal play Yeah, I know. It's tough not right not now. Not tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, not tomorrow <laughs> night or any time this week, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> any other old business? 
All right, seeing none, we'll get into new business. Um, and we're going to be looking at Article 10, which is Initiative Referendum and Recall. Um, this is something that, again, Initiative Referendum or directly out of the MML. Recall is um, uh, a section that was is actually in uh, every charter that I've reviewed so far. And I, I have brought all those charters here, so if anybody would like to, to look at them. Um, and most of the wordage in here, uh, again, oh, I should say almost all the wordage is straight out of the MML with, with few exceptions, other than when they get to a point where there's uh, numbers involved or a method of, of um, actually petitioning that uh, is addressed. So um, I'm going to, does anybody else have what this that would like to read? My voice is kind of hoarse right now. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, that would be great because... <laughs> and and uh, what, I, what I'm going to suggest is when we get to a point where it actually has like numbers or something like that, I'm going to give you numbers from all the charters that I've reviewed. And then uh, I asked Lisa and Janet to get together uh, a history of uh, the voting that's taken place the last, well, in uh, August 2014, or, well, anyway, the last couple of voter histories so that we have an idea how many people voted and, um, uh, and also how many are registered and so forth. So we can use those numbers to decide which numbers we need to have in our, uh, our information. Uh, only on recall, but they, I mean that six month uh, period is is a standard uh, period. I just, I just asked because I, yeah. I was going to read straight through. That that'd be fine. So you're going to read straight through ten point one. Yeah. All right, that'd be that'd be fine. General authority. A initiative. Qualified voters of the city shall have the power to propose ordinances to the Board of Aldermen and if the Board of Aldermen fails to adopt an ordinance so proposed without any changes in substance to adopt or reject if at a municipal election provided that such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program any ordinance relating to the levy of taxes, zoning, or salaries of city employees or any ordinance relating to any appropriation of money unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues, therefore. The term city employees in this section shall not include elected officials. A proposed initiative ordinance shall contain only one subject, which shall be clearly expressed in its title. The election shall be held at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law, for which timely notice may be given. B, referendum. Qualified voters of the city shall have the power to require reconsideration by the Board of Aldermen of any adopted ordinance, and if the Board of Aldermen fails to repeal an ordinance so reconsidered, to approve or reject it at a municipal election, provided that such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program, any emergency ordinance, any zoning or land use issues, or any ordinance levying a special assessment or providing for the issuance of special tax bills, appropriation of money, levy of taxes or salaries of city officers and employees. The term city employees in this section shall not include elected officials. The election shall be held at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law for which timely notice may be given. C. Recall. Any elected official, whether popularly elected or appointed, may be removed by qualified voters no elected official shall be subject to recall within six months after induction into office, nor during the last six months of the official's term. The election shall be held at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law, for which timely notice may be given. If the elected official is retained in office upon any recall election, the official shall not again be subject to recall during the same term of office. And the, so that is the form here yeah. where, it's, where it shows the. Uh, and the, uh, I'm going to I'm going to add one quick um, sentence to the end of that. Uh, 
and it was a suggestion by uh, Lisa. It should say uh, the ballot or the ballot wording shall be semicolon or mm -hmm. yeah. And then just where it says budget or capital program, it yeah. suggested city. Mm -hmm. So just we know it's the city okay, budget. You can you can tell them that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, my suggestion was when it says. Uh, provided that such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program, I suggested putting in city, so we know it's the city budget we're talking about, but I don't know if it could be misconstrued as something else, so. Um, I need to want to that happens in A and B. Uh, it's about a few lines, fourth line down on A and fourth line down on B. Budget. budget or capital program, I just put city in front of it. And on, on C, it was on C as well. What was it? I never seen it. No, it's, I don't or I'm sorry, B you said? Yeah, A and B. A and B. And it's four, four four line, down on yeah. B as well, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody ventured to, um, I don't want to say, let's uh, define capital program. What do we the, do the actual capital program? I mean, that's the program that the city administrator puts together with the Board of Aldermen that we talked about back is in the city ministry. Well, or investment of money. Investment yeah, of money, money, yeah. Well, we should probably find out what and we're calling it. You retain this backup money that's oftentimes invested with the capital program. So, do you think we need a definition for it? Well, I'm not. Really clear. Is this is this common language in all? It's, of yeah, it really is. I mean, you're welcome to take a look at no, any of them. What if, like, for instance, you have an initiative petition that asks for uh, uh, restrictions upon uh, upon uh, issuance of new tax permits or tax abatements? Would that be would that fall under the budget or capital program? I have no idea. So I, I, I mean, it falls under any ordinance relating to the levy of right. zoning or salaries of city employees. I can answer your question, Greg. Um, what we approved for the city administrator, it says, prepare and submit a recommended annual budget and a five-year capital improvement program. So maybe we should change this to capital is improvement. Right. That's why I'm uh, I, so if we could put I in. I disagree with that. <coughs> I really don't think they're the same thing. Yeah. Capital program is something that's defined by government fund accounting, and it's far more general than you. Oh, capital improvement program? Than a capital improvement ah, program. so. Maybe like the sewer. That's what I want. That's what, we, that's what we specify with the city administrator. So what should we do? Take it out or the change the definition of the term Obviously. capital in, in, in government fund accounting includes anything that has to do with real estate or is over a defined set of money. So, so it's really nothing to do with taxation as such. What? Um, I think no, I'm it's lost. Capital program. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, well, what we approved for the city administrator is uh, prepare and submit a recommended annual budget and five year capital improvement program. The capital improvement program and the capital program are not the same but thing. But they're not the same yeah. thing, okay. It's really not the thing we've had them from way before we ever had a city administrator. I'm, so I'm, I'm inclined, the CIP, yeah, the I'm, well, I'm inclined to agree, agree with Ted, but this may be something we have to highlight. Maybe for we should lawyer highlight it and look at it. Too. I think that would, I'd feel comfortable if that was the case. Okay, sounds good to me. And we again, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah, and, and again, it's just. It's the way it's been worded in the MML and all the other charters. I mean, it's ama I was really amazed at how consistent the language was in reviewing them. So, so what would an example of an initiative be? If, if the voters push the initiative petition to put in limitations upon certain actions by the Board of Aldermen and regard it, uh, Tax abatements or so forth. It's a misinitiating legislation, is what it is, th through, through the voter, through the ballot box, as opposed to your board of aldermen. And then an example of referendum? To change an existing legislation through an act of the ballot. <coughs> Originally, 
when it was created in Wisconsin. Initiative was um, where the voters could initiate a law by taking a petition and saying, we want this law, we want you to vote on it. And then referendum was if you voted it down, they could take up another petition with, with more signatures and say, we want the people to vote on this law. And if the people vote on it, it then becomes law. For example, if you took the smoking ban and you passed the, the initiative and you vote the smoking ban down, then the referendum would be, we take it to the voters, if they pass it, it then becomes law. Yeah, so they, they can overturn right. existing legislation to the council. And look, I'm, I'm the, I've been pretty honest about some of the beliefs I've had with this charter in the first place, but to me, and I'm, I'm going to state this as I've always stated, you know, this is something I think that's every community that the charter has. I mean, why should I be afforded less democratic rights because I happen to live in Raytown? And, and that's, 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 and that's, that's my, my mentality about that because, you know, I, I think that, again, this is an additional voter protection. I think it's also an, an additional avenue for voters to, to get their voices heard within this community. So why even have a board of aldermen? No, that's not the case. The point is, you know, you have these checks to power. I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, why have any city council then anywhere because these other cities have initiative process? Have you looked at California and what, what kind of shape they're in with initiative, referendum, and recall? They're in a horrible shape out there. You got idiots running around getting petitions all the time. It's costing. Well, here's the deal. Thousands Later on, you can talk. You can talk. You can talk about the threshold for the percentages for this, but you know I, I tend to have faith in in a majority, not all, but in a majority of, of the voting public. Um, my attitude about this, though, is we, if we want to debate, you know, how do we get initiative? How do we get recall? How do we get referendum? We can talk about the thresholds and make them responsible, so that not any crazy little initiative is going to pop up. You know, and that's where I think we need to be responsible because there's a financial. Uh, liability there as well, you know, with running all these special elections. But again, you know, I, you know, this, I, in my research with the other charters, for, through, through other documents, through other articles I was studying, everybody has this, and you know, I, I really do, th my, my frustration is that we don't have these powers in Raytown as a citizen. So because of, by living in Raytown, again, you know, I happen to live here, I, I'm afforded less democratic rights. That doesn't seem right to me. Yeah. Just to, to maybe to answer the question that Marjean said, um, we don't have initiative referendum and recall at the national level, and there's a, probably a good reason for that. It was originally at the state level, and truly most people that have charters have either um, referendum or they have all three. And, um, and a good example of why that is, because at the local level, it's really our neighborhoods it's our city, it's our school system, our fire department. It is the thing that's closest to our backyard. Um, and the city um, is the community we choose to live in. Uh, and, and why you might do that is, and I'll go back to this, what we call the Clean Air Act. When I ran for um, all of them on one particular election, a number of people that, whose doors I knocked on said to me, you know, I really would like to see a smoky ban in Raytown. Well, there were certainly enough, I didn't count them all, but I'm going to say at least a couple dozen people said that. And so I, I went ahead and initiated that for the Board of Aldermen. Um, and it, it, they hem hawed around for a while, and then we did a, um, um, a, a survey. We city spent $20,000 on a survey, and in that survey, the people, 72% of the people said, yes, they would like to see a smoking ban. But the Board of Aldermen said, I think it was seven to three, said, we don't care what the people want. We're for against smoking bans. And so they voted it down. So in a referendum, if you have most of the people that want it, and only seven, and, and seven out of seven people in right town who were elected say, no, you don't get it, would be a good reason why you might want to have a referendum. I think one of the differences that you see between charters is some have all three, some only have referendum where if the people want to initiate a law, they just go straight to the polls to do it and not to the, the Board of Aldermen because you're doing it twice then. 
you know, the boat, but the board boiled it down, then you have to do it all over again, take it to the people. It's sometimes better to go directly to the people to vote on. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally have not seen any that don't have all three. And, and I took all the regional uh, charters and reviewed all them. And so if somebody's got a charter that they know of that doesn't have all three, I'd like to see it. I have seen only one. It was a while, long back when I did this. But I would say well, probably the reason why you see all three is because of the recall portion of it. If you take up a petition, you put it to the board for the council and they vote it down, they're oftentimes afraid they're going to get recalled if they vote it down. So it's kind of a kind of ace in the hole for the yeah. state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Creates that makes sense. check. Yeah. All right. We've, uh, we've read it once. We've made some minor corrections to it. Um, do you want to reread it based on the corrections? And okay. then, oh, I'm sorry. On here, in the recall, it doesn't exactly say who or why you can be recalled. And I know in the next one, I don't know when I was reading, I thought I saw something about the, yeah, the, about the name, title, elect official to be recalled, and general statement of reasons right. for recall. So. Since this one only deals with elected, shouldn't there be something in there? Well, elected and appointed. Kind of cross matching to that next one? As far as why you would be recalled? Well, I think A, B, and C, but Ted just read, are just kind of like definitions or something like that. It's not trying to get into the full nuts and bolts as to why or something like that. And then section 10.2 actually gets into uh, more of the reasoning, I guess you might say. In the first three, you're just, giving, you're just letting the people know that they have these abilities. And then the rest further states what has to happen. So. Well, I think for recall, at least in my mind, I mean, in order to be successful, it has to be a valid reason. Especially if you have a high enough threshold, you know. Well, and that's I mean, what I'm that's saying. That's, you know, I mean, are we going to play that game where we're going to outline what voters can recall for? No. I mean, that's the thing, and, that, and that's the thing. I, I, I'm afraid. I guess what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that we're going to get too confined and maybe you know, kind of limit the will of the voter. It is my my only concern with that. And and. Again, you know, I think honestly, if you set the threat, then to me, the threshold's key about the recall. You know, you set it, you have a good threshold on there. It's gonna, it's gonna save for some, save the city time from, you know, and maybe elected officials or appointed officials from just a, a sore loser, if you will, or something like that. You know, and um, what it, what it could also do though is, is that it has to be a valid reason. There has to be validity to that in order to get that support. Who determines the valid reason? The voters do. I mean, if they if they support the recall measure or not. I mean, just like when a governor gets recalled or something like that. You know, I mean, they're the ones that. The end of the day, it's, their, it's their decision. It's their decision at the end of the day. Just like it's their decision if, you know, uh, someone was elected or not. You know, they they give a valid reason if you know I deserve to be an officer or not. I do think it's a possibility that if you're going to take a petition. For recall, that you state in your petition of why you want to recall. Sure, well, 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 it, you it says you have to. And it does mention that in right. there. Right. Yeah. And what? And, and that's what you're voting on. Is yeah. it true or not, or a good reason? Right. A motion. Yes. I'll motion. For approval. Okay. okay. I'll second. So I'm going to let Lisa reread it based on the minor changes. Minor changes. And hopefully we can all keep up with her. Are we make any changes other than adding the word city? Uh, city and then at the bottom the ballot wording shall be and then the following. Yeah, and the question on capital yeah. programs. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have the lawyer look at that though I think maybe. We didn't change anything though but yeah. Okay. 
Do you want it reread? I, personally, I think okay. that the capital programs is really meant to be programs that are already funded and in place so that we cannot go back and try to de-budget something that's already been budgeted. Okay. And I think that's yeah. probably very close to the definition. A capital program has to do with the, the size and nature of the government expenditure. Say uh, expenditure would be the word there, yeah. Or it could be a lot of things. I mean, even if you are getting grant money, anything that is spent on capital improvement could be a capital program. Mm -hmm. And if, if indeed we got grant money for sidewalks, the voters couldn't take a petition and say, we want to spend it on streets. Right. But capital improvement from an example of the capital improvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we just highlight that word and see what the lawyer says. All right, Article 10, Section 10.1, General Authority. A, initiative. The qualified voters of the city shall have the power to propose ordinances to the Board of Aldermen, and if the Board of Aldermen fails to adopt an ordinance, so proposed without any change in substance to adopt or reject it or reject if at a municipal election provided that such powers shall not extend to the city budget or capital program in question any ordinance related to the levy of taxes zoning or salaries of city employees or any ordinance relating to any appropriation of money unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues therefore the term city employees in the section shall not include elected officials a proposed initiative ordinance shall contain only one subject which shall be clearly expressed in its title. The election shall be held at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law for which timely notice may be given. <coughs> B. Referendum. The qualified voters of the city shall have the power to require reconsideration by the Board of Aldermen of any adopted ordinance and, if the Board of Aldermen fails to repeal an ordinance so reconsidered, to approve or reject it at a municipal election provided that such power shall not extend to the city budget or capital program, again question, any emergency ordinance, any zoning or land use issues, or any ordinance levying a special assessment or providing for the issuance of special tax bills, appropriation of money, levy of taxes, or salaries of city officers and employees. The term city employees in this section shall not include elected officials. This, the election shall be held at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law for which timely notice may be given. C. Recall. Any elected official, whether popularly elected or appointed, may be removed by qualified voters. No elected official shall be subject to recall within six months after induction into office, nor during the last six months of the official's term. The election shall be held at the next, regular, at the next available regular or special election date as established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with state law for which timely notice may be given. If the elected official is retained in office upon any, any recall election, the official shall not again not be again sub, uh, sorry. The official shall not be again subject to recall during the same term in office. The ballot wording shall be shall such and such name such and such title of office such and such be removed from office, yes or no. Um, I do have one question. When we have in there timely notice may be given we don't have, we don't, we're not required to give timely notice then? Otherwise it would say shall be given. <coughs> I'm just wondering, in accordance with state law for which timely notice may be given about an election, referendum, recall, the whatever. The charter has the ability to place a shall on the state. Okay, yeah, that's, okay. That's, that's, yeah, just checking. Thank you. But also on, because it says in here on both of these about special elections. So wouldn't that be an additional cost to the city? Well, it's only saying that you can put it, if there was a special election going on, you could put it on the special election, in, in with the special election. special election. Yeah, it's not saying that you can, you're going to have a special election just for that. All right. Um, yeah. There's a line in here that does bother me a, a little bit. Under initiative, it says, or sentence, it says, you see it? No, it says not really an appropriation of money. It just doesn't. This line that says, for any ordinance relating to any appropriation of money, unless such ordinances, ordinance provides for additional revenues, therefore. It seems like there's a qualification there that's not included in the referendum, not included in the call. 
I, I think why should why should the public not be allowed to address issues of taxation? Are you referring to the initiative mm -hmm. section? Mm -hmm. But wouldn't that be covered in referendum Six if there's an already existing legislation? What? Wouldn't that be no, covered going forward? Oh, so you're talking about like if you want to ban ban some kind of. No, his, his point uh, is. If you, that, if, his I'm just thinking hypothetical. The initiative here says that in order that that you cannot have initiative for an ordinance that relates to an appropriation of money unless such ordinance. Well, that provides that well, that gives them the funding of that. that. Right. You're taking away. You're well, well, taking away. You can't do retroactive. I, I know. Right. Do you, should you especially have to give something back? I'll give you an example. When I was very young, I was on the city council. Hmm. Don't laugh. It happened. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, there was a uh, we had a, a, a situation in Raytown where you had two water companies. One was private. One was public. The private water company was charging sales tax on their. Uh, on the water that you bought. The public one did not because they said they were a public entity, therefore they were not subject to those laws. And the city council, we, I brought an ordinance, and me and a couple of us brought an ordinance, and we, we reversed that. We did away with the sales tax on the private one since we could not make the public one do it. I suppose if you were to say that somebody wanted to bring this by initiative petition, according to what we're looking at here and considering, you couldn't do that unless you found a way to replace that money. And I don't think that's especially right. Because sometimes taxes are done away with. We used to have a city sticker tax in this town. We don't anymore. That was done by the city council. I believe that the purpose of an initiative is to give the public the same power as you stated earlier to reach forward and to do what the legislators are not doing for them. And therefore, and I'm, I'm looking at this one because we do not see this exactly in Blue Springs. And I'm looking in the Lee Summit to see if they have it in here if I can find a section. Which is that backwards from what it says though? If you eliminate a tax, that's not specific to an appropriation. I agree. The appropriation has to be how money is being spent. If you eliminate a tax, well, it's all appropriated. It's all spendable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all spendable, but that doesn't make it an appropriation. Not if you until. want to eliminate a tax, that, that doesn't prohibit it. No, that doesn't approve anything that, that's been appropriated. It's just short of short of funds. Well, I'm reading it a little bit differently. I, I think what it says is that when the board of aldermen, first of all, we are given by the finance director a projection of what the budget will be for next year, and we sit down and all the departments plan their budget. I think it's saying that so once you pass the budget, if the public doesn't like the way you budget your money, they turn around and have an issue and they budget your money for you. And I'm thinking what it's saying is, no, you can't do that. You can, you can pass more taxes if you want something new, yeah. but you can't go back and change the budget that they just passed. Why not? Unless such ordinance provides for additional revenue. Because, therefore, you would not have a budget. Once you pass it by ordinance, in the and then you have to wait because it's coming up for vote, you're saying, therefore, we can't spend in the money because there's going to be an initiative to tell us how we're going to spend it. Wouldn't even work. Would be sticky. You can't if you in essence if you can't spend the money you budget you pass by ordinance you don't have a budget therefore the government shuts down. Couldn't even pay for your salaries because the budget's been shut down by the public because they just passed an initiative saying can't spend your money. So I therefore, think there would be a good pay if they shut if, down every revenue stream. If you yeah, get, if you get that's... that many people saying no on an initiative, you'd think that. But Maybe there's all the thing is that once the budget's passed, the public can't turn around and decide to rewrite the budget for you. I'm just saying, you theoretically, we can write it like that. What they got to do is they got to raise taxes. What right. they do, exactly, and then they can get what they want. What I'm they saying want. is, we could write it that way theoretically. I'm just well, wanted well, to hear what, the what I'm now. suggesting is that we allow the public to do it because there are some inequities in the way that we collect tax in Raytown. For instance, your utilities. We all pay a franchise tax on our utilities. We also pay a sales tax on our utilities. The franchise tax, the sales tax, is taxed on the franchise tax. So you're being taxed on a tax. To me, that's terribly wrong. And, and I think that we should have changed it a long time ago and not had it that way. Um, sometimes I think municipalities do things that are contrary to what's best for them and for their own people. You only got to do is go to Kansas City and see what the earnings tax has done to them over there. It's hamstrung their development. That's why everybody rushes over to Kansas to get away from the earnings tax. You know, or to the suburbs. So I just think that. 
you have a suggestion for? Well, I, I don't think that we should have that. I mean, if somebody comes forward with something that says, we're not going to allow you to tax, the public's not going to look for it. They're not going to, in, 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 in anybody's wildest dreams. But I, I think that we're hamstringing whoever does an initiative petition in that one thing. And, I, and of all the things that you can vote on, what is the most important on almost anything in life it comes down to money. You know, I mean, it, it shouldn't, unless, well, you brought up a good example on the smoking ban. That's, that's another, you know. Uh, we could turn into a dry city and not have any liquor sales, but, or so forth. But um, I don't know. I, I, just, I just think that that sentence, I'd like to leave that open for more discussion once we have an attorney to. Well, let me, let me just tell you what's, I mean, <clears throat> the last half of that sentence where it says, or any ordinance relating to any appropriation of money unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues thereof, therefore, that's what you're questioning, right? I'm mm -hmm. in section okay. A or B. Yeah, we're in section A. Uh, that sent that half of that sentence is not in the MML, <coughs> but it seemed to be in all the other charters that I read. But in some in some it's wordage. Contrary to the to the earlier part of the sentence where you cannot initiate initiative for the levy of taxes. So if you cannot have an initiative to create a tax, how does that exception work at all? As what he's you know, this is, mind you, this is not helping Greg's argument. <laughs> but the example he's looking at here simply says, among the things that you cannot have an initiative for is an ordinance related to the appropriation of money, end of phrase, and then levy of taxes. You cannot, you cannot have an initiative to levy taxes, and you cannot have an initiative to uh, uh, appropriate money. And again, while this is not helping his argument, th that extra part in that sentence there is a contradiction to the pro prohibition against levying taxes. I mean, if you cannot levy taxes to begin with, how are you going to provide a revenue stream? I guess you can mandate a bake sale, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, I mean, there's other ways of gaining money. I mean, you got grant programs and everything else that you can get funding for certain things. So, by initiative, you're you're going to mandate that somebody give you a grant? I don't well, no. Yeah, I mean, I don't think well, you can. Give you grants. Yeah, yeah. They're not just going to give them to you. But I mean, if there's a way of getting a grant or something like that to help with it. But I mean. Uh, the first part of that sentence is straight out of the MML. I wow. mean, up up to the point where it says city employee. What? Well, I, I, I mean, so. <coughs> well, I'll repeat that we're arguing two different things. But okay. I think it goes to the point that it's created confusion by adding the last part of that phrase, where it says unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues, therefore. Um, I don't know how an initiative is going to provide additional revenues, particularly when it can't be used to levy taxes. And yeah, the period already says, right. mm -hmm. or it's related to the levy of taxes. So, so it's contradicting. Yeah. I, I don't see why we're putting restrictions on it. I, I, that's what I'm, I guess I'm If saying. you would leave out the last, yeah. the comma, so any ordinance, all that stuff, just leave it out. And what and the MML has? I would agree with they that, had too. That last section. Yeah, they, would you like to do a motion? And, um, Amendment. Amend a motion then to, strike, to amend yeah. to amend by striking the words. Any ordinance related to the levying of taxes. And we just put a period after. No, 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 no. yeah. Oh, I thought that's what you meant. Okay. Unless such ordinances, unless such ordinances. Just no. give the amendment. I was asking. Okay. Yeah. 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 Definitely, you want to protect that. You don't want that. That would be anarchy. <laughs> well. I, th I think that's the same argument that goes for the appropriation of money. I think the words that's causing the confusion is, unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues, therefore. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but this, this is going down to what you're saying here. It, just says, it strictly says you can't. That's right. I and that's what it says here. I know, but that just, look, well, that's a different it. argument that right. you don't like it. Well, <laughs> just because the MML said it didn't come down from the heavens and then down to the mountain and then down to well, the MML. Well, the MML didn't say it us. is the thing. <laughs> The MML didn't say it, he said. 
Yeah, it, it didn't say anything right. after the, the city employees. The, the that came out of other. The motion to amend that I'm proposing eliminates the words, unless such ordinance provides for additional revenues, therefore. I think that's contradictory when you, when right up above there, it says you cannot have an initiative to levy taxes. What about fees? Uh, licenses. What about them? It's not mentioned in there. So I'm not bringing it up. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, one, by, 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 by not saving them, you've eliminated them. Okay. Such power shall not extend to the budget. We don't do that, I think. Or to capital programs, because this is money that's basically decided that it's going to be where it's already part committed. Of the okay. Maybe part of the contract or mm -hmm. Or zoning. I want well, to think of part of the levy of taxes. Zoning or salaries of city employees. That's what I was suggesting. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Any ordinance relating to zoning, take out the levy of taxes, put zoning or salary of city employees, period. Because it's one of those things where if there is a major problem big enough to have that many signatures about a zoning issue. Why couldn't they change it? I don't see a reason why well, they shouldn't. Do you have your own mail? Because I, I think yeah. that yeah. the reason I can That's think of my zone is you might have to look at it. Because there are my legal precedents. Yeah, I just, I just had it open to it. Those are public yeah. hearings where this is that body structure. I'm sorry. Now, yeah, but you're right. Like it, you're, you're three I apologize. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you could write it so. It What's confusing is, in the state of Missouri, the only people who can raise taxes are the people and voters themselves. So you wouldn't have an initiative because it's already okay. going to come to the voters. So it's public. completely superfluous. All the last part of the sentence is what you're saying. So Greg, you're suggesting that to strike. I would read, provided that such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program or any ordinances relating to zoning or salaries of city employees, and then just put a period there. Okay, strike out the levy Well, but we have a motion on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But That's we right. do have a original motion. Nobody he's seconded trying, Ted's he's amendment. Trying to he's, so. trying to make a, he's trying to make it. He's trying to make it. Okay. 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 <laughs> of course, this would all be subject to the new by uh, Right. I think, I think, if anything, you would leave in the levy of taxes and highlight it, and because... I'm just reading right out of Belton, and Belton and Raymore's are written exactly the way this one is written. But we're not Belton template. and Raymore. Well, but I mean, <laughs> it could be. It could be. Opinion, I guess. Okay, Greg. I mean, that's a matter. Of, if, if you amend it, and then when we, you when you show it to the attorney, are you going to ask him would that be appropriate to still have that in there? Exactly. Or that's why we're. Like it? That's why we're highlighting it, yeah, so okay. we can have that. Because so we're not really taking it out. We're going to ask the attorney if it needs, it needs to be there. If not, well, then well we have to listen it. to his amendment, then. I don't know. I don't think it would leave it up to him to make our decision. Well, you know, I think it would be nice there. to yeah, and I agree with you, but it, I, don't, I think it would be wise to seek counsel on that. I don't yeah. see oh, I agree. recommendation about it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just curious what he has if, to say. If the no. citizens are the ones no. that approve the taxes, why would you go and recall the taxes? But I don't know. It just seems superfluous. Well, a lot of them aren't, aren't approved by that way. That I didn't think they were, good. but okay. That's true. All right, or so how would that read? Saying, are they saying that if the people of the state of Missouri created tax for the state of Missouri, then the people of Raytown can't rescind that tax to the Raytown? That's what it's saying right now. It doesn't. It doesn't? It doesn't. It sounds like it does to me. What? I don't understand why it wouldn't. If it says that the qualified voters will have the power to propose ordinances, and if the board fails to adopt an ordinance, that they can move to initiative except right. the city budget or capital programs, except revenue taxes, except zoning, except salaries of city employees, and except any ordinance relating to the appropriation of money and less secure money for Right. So you cannot take those things to initiative. Yeah. It's not giving you the power to take them to initiative. It's telling you you cannot you take them to blocking right. Yeah, we've actually right. got a thing named initiative that tells you as much to know that you can't do or what you can do. Which is 
contrary to the idea of initiative. And, uh, no, I think, think it's just defining. I presume the design it. is to keep from destroying the, the city council's ability to create a budget. Exactly. And to handle zoning and land use issues. We've had situations where cities go rogue. Um, well, then it's, it away, and then, but here you have no way to address it. It could be then Detroit, and then have no right. You deal with it to recall that, I would presume, because if, if you... If, That'd be the consequence of such action. Time, the, the consequence of changing too much of this is that any time you create a budget, you are going to have petitions to change the appropriations in the budget because somebody didn't get what they want. That, that, that many true. signatures? Really? Who's going to walk to do that? Who's going to walk to do that? You would be surprised. <laughs> okay, so are we doing an amendment or not? Well, um, I think we ought to... If, if you amend it, have to yeah, the referendum has the same situation. So, don't what to do. Provided that so, such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program, we agree that's fine. Any emergency ordinance, I don't understand that part. Because uh, I've seen emergency ordinances to rename streets. You know, <laughs> I think it's, yeah. Well, I have. Well, I think we fixed that in the definition of a recovery. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any zoning power shall not, ex or any zoning or land use issues agreed on that, or any ordinance levying a special assessment or providing for the issuance of special tax bills. I can understand special assessment, special tax bills. I don't understand the definition of that exactly. Appropriation of money, levy of taxes, there it is again. And I mean, it's just, once again, you have a situation where you say, okay, we're going to give you this power with initiative referendum now. Now, here's this long list of things you will not do. Yeah, you cannot do. Yeah. So you want to take, you want to give people the power to have initiative or referendum to levy taxes, but I think not to levy special assessments being the fees you discussed. Mm -hmm. Um, I just or these. providing the issuance for special tax bills. The, the irrationality of this is just... I don't know. But the, what, the discussion, discussion I gave earlier on uh, the sales tax being taxed upon a tax. Suppose there was, generally speaking, you know, that people said, you know, mm -hmm. we don't think we should have to pay a tax on top of the tax. We think it's wrong. You're really not talking that much money. I've often wondered why the city never just didn't voluntarily do away with it. But suppose the public went forward and said, we don't think you should tax us on a tax, and that's what you're doing, so we're going to make it so you cannot tax us on a tax. According to this, they can't do that. The way it's written. That, account, that, that happens a lot, Greg. Uh, the, the phone bills, AT&T, mm -hmm. federal end user fees, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. they just keep, it's, it's a tax, a tax, tax, tax on a tax. Yeah. Um, I agree with everything Greg says. I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd like to see it changed where, not to the point of, Anarchy, where no, main no, 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 it's not mine. <laughs> but, uh, but but I can I can see where if someone has an issue with hey you know why are we paying bird bird watching tax uh, you know because <coughs> it's really silly sometimes. So on A, let's start with A. Is somebody going to throw out an amendment and get it seconded? Well, I, I'll throw it out there then. Okay. Um, going to the fourth sentence where it says such power shall not extend to the budget or capital program or any ordinance relating to, strike what I don't say. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Zoning or salaries of city employees. You see what I skipped? Yep. Okay. Period. Okay. And then that cuts out what he wanted to cut out. Yeah. That, that, <coughs> that's pretty much it. Um, on B. On B. So what you're saying is you want the general public to have the ability to... Yeah. Well, they're the ones paying the bill. Yeah, to, to, argue, to argue against a, a, a tax or anything. Levy well, levying of taxes. We don't want any tea dumped. So, we dump it I mean, if Jackson County imposes a tax or... I mean, uh, I would, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm tired of paying no, Jackson no, County all the money for them no, to stop the, the new no, roads no, at, no, at no, the beginning no, of Raytown no, here. No, you no, can't legislate that in the city. Greg B. We do that on cars all the time. I mean, if you have federal taxes that go on cars, and you end up paying a tax on top of that when you pay your sales tax. So you don't have a choice. 
strike levy effect. And that's usually why you Should we strike it or just highlight it for the attorney? Well, we'll strike it so we can put a footnote there if you want to, right. because I'm sure that this will be revisited. Can you there. repeat what you said? I'm sorry. Well, in B, I think all you want to do is strike levy of taxes. I mean, apparently it looks like all, of course, to the federal and state and cities, they think they can tax the way this. to prosperity. I don't think it's going to make a difference because I think in the end it's all, it's, it'll be decided for you. Either no, by the state or by the federal government. Okay. And is there anything in C, Greg? No. I don't know. Okay. We're discussing another change. I state. will second your amendment. Let's just do an issue first. She's And, and I, I want to stress that this, my point here is not to go out and to start a petition once this passes. My point here is that we should not answer people on what they can do with their initiative petitions. Um, I disagree. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I think you got to have some control I, over it. We do have control. Well, I'd like yeah. to re, I'd like to see here right again, it? just what, what you're proposing because I and I, I get the levy of tax argument, but. I think you got to be very cautious when you start going in. You know, there, there's obviously budget concerns and things like that in terms of in terms of the mundane business of City Hall that needs to be consistent, and that's that's what concerns me on on, on that end. So, I'd be happy if I'd feel better if we could reread this. But honestly, I would feel much better if this was just highlighted and we can. Have a, get a seat counsel of a lawyer just so we can ask some of these questions okay. too because some of us are pretending we have JDs here and we don't. That's true. You know, so I would prefer if maybe, and I do get the argument the levy of taxes completely. I really do with you. I sympathize on that. Being said, though, I do want to see that highlighted and, and, so I, and I like to this whole see, Rather than see the issue prematurely stomped, which I get the sense yeah. that probably will happen, um, I, would, I would rather see it carried over in that case. Would you would you be necessarily opposed if we maybe you know voted well, on this, but then can, had that section looked at, and then we right, can revote on that? We can, we can that. vote on the, on the on the on the general premise of initiative referendum recall, which I think there's probably a majority for anyway. You know, it's it's an option that we leave ten one the way it is with this discussion mm -hmm. and just move on. Yeah. Without voting on ten one at all. Amen. Because because. It, it, can be, it can be rewritten by three or four of us here and, pre and presented in a, in a finished rewritten form so everybody can look at it and, and understand what it is that they're trying to get rid of. Take out the taxes or take out the half sentence or, or whatever. Um, and, and we can come back to it. Are you this suggesting? Just like last right. week. We don't have to do this. In are you suggesting we front -to -back not hear the last um, amendment and second then? You've already seconded. I, I know. I know, because you got two motions. You've got I know. The amendment and the I'm just asking you if that was... No, if you want to okay. leave it alone and move on, we vote both down. We don't want well, to vote them down. We just, we just make a motion to consider, consider it a later time. I think that takes precedent, yeah. Yeah. If we move so to a, a motion to table. postpone, That's we can't true. table. We yeah. cannot table, we can postpone. postpone. But we have to postpone it to a specific... Oh, no, the sky is not falling. There's no immediate thing that we can hear. It's postponing. Right. If you table, that means there is something significant, like the sky is falling in this room and we have to get out of the building. We can't do this right uh, now. Let's just move on. Postponing. And, yeah. And, and so if somebody wants to guess is this is something an attorney put in after someone else wrote it. Mm -hmm. And there's a logic somebody, behind it that we can't figure out. That's the point. I want to hear that logic. Yeah. Okay, so when should we postpone it to? We have to. Whenever we have the attorney. Until we have to have a date to postpone it to. So TBA. So we have one here. Okay. Um, so if you want to make the motion to postpone until we get an attorney to look at it. I'm going to postpone this. Okay. So until we get Let's right. highlight those sentences, too, in our notes. So that, that way it's already we done. know what to bring up. Great. Thanks. All right. It's been motioned and seconded to postpone. We seconded? Michael. Michael. Okay. All right. Mary Jane Van Busker. Postpone what? One. 10.1. 10.1. Section 10.1. Ten 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 all, all the things. Mary it's Jane. Thing. All the whole things. We had it in B2. Because some of the wording is consistent. Mary Jane. Is this just 
postponed or postponed until we get a lawyer? Yes, postponed until we get a lawyer, because we can't, we have to have a specific time to postpone. Now, are you postponing C also? He's a, I don't know if he's Yes, we're doing all the work. Yes, my understanding. Yes. All right. Mary Jane Van Busker. Yes. No. Oh, okay. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Interesting. Uh, Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Lisa Emerson abstain. Abstain. So what's that count? Ten to uh, ten. Ten, one, and ten. No, I can't. Nine, one, and two. Yes, that's the abstentions. Ten to zero. They passed ten to zero. Okay. All right, that motion passes. Ten to zero. All right, we'll move on to section Should we include the first sentence? And maybe I'm already answering my own question, but it says any five qualified voters should be included of the city, or is of the city to be assumed to be a qualified voter? That'd be a good point. I, I agree with you. Well, I know, but the well, yeah, I'm a, yeah, and I just my, my fear would be it's like doing and, I, and it may be covered in the word qualified voter, but again, well, I just want to make sure that. People are qualified voters in Kansas City, Missouri, right. too. Well, I know, well that was the thing I suggested for the last thing we should put yeah. in the city, just to make sure that we're really So, I mean, I just want to make sure it's in there. I would that suggest that, too. Don't want to leave any if little anybody's loopholes. not okay with that. Nice catch. Okay, just to let everybody know, everything that I looked at, they all had five qualified voters at the beginning, and then where it says three business days, only Raymore had five. Everybody else that I looked at had three. So it seemed to be pretty consistent with the three there. Well, that's, that's, that's not the What did you say about the number five? Well, where it says any five, uh, that was what every uh, charter and the MML suggested. So that number was consistent. And then where it said not more than three business days down at the bottom, out of all the charters and the MML that I looked like looked at, only Raymore had five. All the other ones had three. So three seemed to be the consistent number. So we can make it whatever we want. What was the idea of five? I don't think three's an incapable number of getting the petition blanks together to be distributed. Say that again. I said I think five is fine for the number of the qualified voters. Right. Uh, okay. And that you know, the three business days after they the notarized affidavit is plenty of time for the clerk to be able to get the appropriate petition blanks distributed right. to the committee. Motion to accept is written with the word city and Second. All right. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Ace Emerson. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. No. Greg Walters. Yes. 
Michael McDonough. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. And Jason Scott. 10.3 petitions. A number of signatures. One initiative. An initiative petition shall be signed by qualified voters of the city, equal in number to at least 10 percent of the total number of qualified voters registered to vote at the last regular municipal election. Two a referendum. A referendum petition shall be signed by qualified voters of the city, equal in number to at least 10 percent of the total number of qualified voters registered to vote at the last regular municipal election. Three, recall. A recall petition shall be signed by qualified voters for that office in number equal to at least 30 percent of the total number of qualified voters registered to vote at the last regular municipal election. All right. Just uh, to give you some information um, on initiative where it says 10 percent, the MML suggestion is 15. Lee Summit is 7, but they qualify it differently. Uh, Raymore is 10, Belton's 10, Blue Springs is 8. Um, Lee Summit, uh, I'm not sure if, I, I think it was still on the registered voters. You have the Lee Summit one still, don't you? Um, yes, I do. Right. Lee, Lee, uh, Lee Summit only uh, had their recall one different in the way they did it. So, I wonder about the part where it says that voters registered to vote at the last regular municipal election. That's quite a qualifier to have to go back and prove. So, wait a minute. Wait, 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 we had a yeah, that, we had that was the number. Yeah. I understand that, but, 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 but registered voters to vote at the last regular municipal election. In other words, if you weren't registered to vote at the last regular municipal election, you couldn't sign the petition. Right, right, correct. That's, That's where it is. Well, now, well, now, too, they're not saying people that voted. No, they're, they're not. not. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because it's the 10 percent of that total, total number that voters. voted. You're right. I misread. Yeah. Okay, and to give you an idea, there are 16,863 registered voters, 16,867 in the city of, least, uh, city of Raytown. If you look at 10 percent, that's, you'd have to gain 1,687 names on your petition. That's a pretty high number. I mean, you'd have to be worth while doing. If you did instead by the number of people who voted in the last mm -hmm. election or any given the, election, more, that would be way too low. The, the so I'm thinking that, registered voters names. in my opinion, I think that getting 10% of the registered voters might be a little high, and the getting 10% of the registered uh, voters who actually voted is way too low. So maybe we could figure out a percentage somewhere. In so there. how much was the last one um, of voters? April voted? 2014 was almost 2,000 people, 1989. And August of 2014 was 3,828 people voted. And so 10% of that is only like two to three, 400 people. It's nothing. That well, would that's, be way too easy to get. Yeah, but you only want to look at municipal election numbers. Right. I'm, I'm just giving figures um, for um, which it would be the August one or would it be the April? Be uh, it would be the April. April. Okay. Yeah. That would be way low then. Yeah. At any rate, the 10% at 16. 1,600 people is a lot of signatures. Mm -hmm. So if we could find five would be 800. Uh, five percent of 16. Yeah, it would be 800. And yeah. So what about 43, 44? Yeah. 8,000. Well, 800. 43. Right. It'd be 843. For both of them. Yes, 844 people would be five percent. Five percent be 844. Lee Summit put 7% in theirs. What would 7% do? 7%? Seven percent. Seven percent. Seven percent. 1,180. Something about having the four digits makes it seem almost insurmountable. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, but you don't want it happening a lot. I mean, you, don't want, it, you want, want it to be a valid reason. If you, can, reasons, if yeah. you consider, yeah. if you consider right. that, that figure well, no, at then, 7% would be uh, almost only a few hundred shy of how many people actually voted in the election. 
that's pretty that's pretty close. Um, if, if only two thousand people vote in the April election, and you only need eleven hundred or twelve hundred, like that's only a few hundred difference. Right. Too, yeah, you are. Oh, I understand that. I'm just saying that getting more people out for that is so. The question, real quick, can, can I ask a question here? Um, we could we can try playing with the numbers or not, or it could be. I mean, you want to keep it the last regular municipal election? Is that what we're always going to base these numbers off of? No, because it doesn't always have to be. It could be, you know, the the last election. I think that's the easy. It yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, and the reason I asked that is because we can manipulate the percentages all we want. I just want to make sure what we're going off of because we're giving August numbers and we're also giving, if, would you, you know, just for April, April numbers. Okay, just shy of 2,000. How's it done at the state? I mean, when you take an initiative and referendum at the state, how did they do it? Probably off the last this statewide election. It's the last federal ones, I imagine. I'm thinking, how do they do it for the charter process was done off the last municipal election? No, but it was done off the number of people who no, voted. That's not right. The right. Voted not them. But perhaps that's a guideline we should follow, and then if you want, then you could up to 10, 15. Well, I mean, if you did it that way, um, and you even did 30%, you'd only be looking at around 600. So here, here's the deal, though. I think that you play a dangerous game when you talk about voting turnout, because sometimes voting turnout at municipal levels higher when the mayor is running, as opposed to the non-site, non-mayor cycle, it may be lower. Like for instance, this last April election, um, we had the school board bond issue, so it happened to be a higher, obviously, turnout. Mm -hmm. You know, so at least my suggestion would be to base it off of. Um, Registered voters. It's more consistent that way. There's a there's a threshold that's consistent, regardless of the time. It's a, it's a static number. It yeah. Right. As opposed, really as opposed to a you know let's say there was a really bad ice storm one, you know yeah, April yeah. election and no one came out and so now all of a sudden I get 200 signatures and I'm gonna get or just choose you know? a single number <laughs> or just choose a number that you like. Yeah, but the problem is the population swings. You know, I, I think if you had it just based off, and I see your point though, it has some consistency. But you know, I think if if you base it off registered voters, that percentage off of them, I think you get a consistent, clear picture. I like seven percent. Well, I'm curious what the numbers are for. Okay, so registered voters in Raytown, sixteen eighty. Okay, so seven percent would be eleven hundred. And eighty. Yes. That's a lot. But I mean, no. that's a that's a lot. But I mean, you go to you go to like a city like Lee Summit, and how many there's eighty thousand or so or more people read, mm -hmm. and how many registered voters, and they're saying seven percent. So I mean, in order for them to get a initiative started, they they're looking at three or four thousand signatures. But there's a lot more people to collect. I think I'm more yeah. people to collect but yeah. I mean, so but the, the effort, I mean, it's still the amount of effort that has to be done. Would it be just one issue that you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, you're only, you know, so you have one. 50 people going out to get In 1,100 Summit. things. It's Good not like here. us that had to right. go get right. 50 mm -hmm. names right. or something mm -hmm. like that. So it, that's not insurmountable when you take 1,100 and you divide it by so many people and going out to get, you know, everybody's got to get a hundred or something. Right. What does six do? One thousand twelve. What about eight? Would you say anything? Yeah, I'm inclined to go up a little bit. Go for it. I like. And Blue Springs, then they, they had eight as part of the surplus. So what's that? I'm working on. Thirteen fifty. But you know, honestly, I mean, if it's a great issue, I think, again, this this is the filter. This is the filter to make sure it's not some bogus mm -hmm. argument. Yeah. I'm fine with ten, to be frank with you. I think sixteen hundred signatures. Almost seventeen. Almost seventeen hundred. Yeah, sixteen eighty-seven. I mean, that, sorry, that, that's just me. I mean, I really do think that yeah. if it's an issue that's worthwhile, that, that's how you vet it. And you look. I, I mean, I, I mean, I said earlier, I trust the majority of Raytown voting. Public, because the ones we have the vote in April tend to be the ones that are more, you know, in in in, in touch with things. I'm not going to speak about the November elections. Obviously, you get all sorts of individuals that come out for those. But the point is, the April municipal elections, you usually have voters who are more in tune with what's going on in municipal affairs. And I think if you 
if, if you base it off registered, registered voters, I, I do think that you have a high threshold, nothing ridiculously too high, but something that says, look, if, if you can't get an extra 400 signatures from 1,200 to 1,700 or 1,600, whatever, that, then maybe what you're pushing it doesn't carry any weight. You're, you're pushing it to the number up to almost how many people have actually vote on right. the issue. That's how many people would have voted. I'm, I'm telling you, this, you're getting a signature, though. Yeah, it's a lot easier to get a signature. signature. And yeah. this is based off, this is registered right. voters. So, I mean, look, it's not like I'm talking about actual people that I need to get the signature no, if I they're mean, voting or not. Right. If you have that initiative on the ballot, you may only have 1,600 people vote. Which means you have to have hundred percent of the people signing the petition. Well, no, or, no, 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 not necessarily. No, that actually voted. No, I mean, the, the in reality, that's what that's what it's doing. It's no, you saying, can stand out in front of the grocery store and say, "Are you, if you registered voter?" Yeah. Hey, here's my issue, and you can say whatever you want. It doesn't and mean then it has to come they out. can sign their name to it. They can get it certified by the board of elections. And I'm get just that my, my voter. big concern. My big concern again. This is the vetting process, and I, I'm again. I'm, I'm I'm afraid that, and not that again. I don't trust individuals to, to at least try to work towards yeah, something to, to a solution, but I think that if you make something too low, you run the risk of driving up election yeah, costs fine. drastically. And that's something I'm very afraid of doing. Well, not so. like that. You don't, you don't, if somebody is just out there somewhere, you know, and, and they're mad at the city for whatever reason. A win. Yeah. And if you make it high enough, and if they really, really want it, they'll get out and work uh -huh. and get what yeah. they need. Yeah. They'll be if moving. If they're just plain lazy, we don't have to work. Well, and if they're lazy, obviously yeah. they didn't care much about they're the issue in the first place. Uh, I, just so, I, I just don't think 17, 1,600 signatures is hard to get. I don't I, think it's know, that hard I to think get. About, um, I can get run it. for office, it talk, takes, I think, 50 signatures to get on the ballot in Raytown, yet nobody ever goes out and gets the 50 signatures because they realize after 20 they've gone through their A-list. And they go, oh my goodness, this is harder than I thought. You can One speak for the, yourself oh, on that end. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. Let's. <laughs> the, the thing is, I think I think you're putting it way too high to where you'll never see this used. You okay. Even have well, I, I, I disagree, but. Uh, I agree with Jason. You agree okay. With okay. Jason. Let's. I agree with Jason. Uh, we have all the numbers. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I think we're all in agreement that, I mean, unless somebody says something differently, we go with qualified registered voters at the last municipal election, correct? So we put in registered? Excuse me. Oh. Does it matter? Are we voting on all three of these? No, no, we're just doing separate. 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 Yeah. Do I need to put in registered? It doesn't make any difference. It says 10% of the total number of qualified voters registered. I'm sorry. That's right. I haven't right. seen you registered anywhere. Oh, you mean at the bottom, I see. No, I, thought you meant the, one. The, I know, I thought you meant the top line, signed by qualified voters of the city, of the total right. qualified All right. voters. All right, 10% oh. okay. is 1,687, 8% is 1,350, 7 is 1,180. I can't see going below that. Mm -hmm. But right now, can I just have a show of hands at who would put 10% in? All right, that's a consensus. Let's put the 10 in. And we'll vote on it then from there. Well, no, we're we're going to do initiative. I mean, I'd say we just do them each separately, or unless you want to. Well, we do them at the same time. Well, referendum is basically the same thing. Right. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So is somebody motioning to do A. Well, well, we have to do. We have to do recall, the number on recall, though. But we're, are, are we gonna, we're going to vote by these Isn't separately, a? correct? I thought you just divided them up and yeah. set voting on them separately. I thought we were doing that as well. Uh, yeah, we're voting A and B. Yeah, second. Okay. I agree. Okay. Okay, so we'll vote on A and B. Do we have a motion? Her okay. motion was, would you like to just do A and B? A and B. That's a lot of stuff. That, I don't think that's what you mean. No, oh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. One and two. A. A. One and two. One you're talking one and two. Ted, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm say? getting at. One and two. <laughs> one, and two. <laughs> one and two. There you yeah, go. Yeah, one and two. We know what he meant. Okay. Ten, ten percent. A, one and two. One moment, please. And Ted seconded, and okay, 
Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Greg Walters. Pass. Mark Moore. Yes. Lisa Emerson Pass. Jason Green. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Charlotte Melson. Yes. Jim Asia. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Oh, why not? Sure. All right. That's a yes. <laughs> if you want me to, do you want me to send out the figures to everybody so you can look at them, or do you care? No. Yeah, I'd like yeah. one. Okay. Figures are you talking about? The, what I just did the calculations on yeah. for the oh. registered voters and things. <coughs> well, two people care, so I'm sending it out. <laughs> well, I think the number of registered voters needs to be. What? How many signatures? No, no, no. I'm just sending out for everybody's yeah. knowledge just to know well, just what we looked at tonight. Okay, I, w I would ask that you enter in the minutes that the discussion included the fact that there were 16,000 government right. registered. Okay, I'll do that. But that's going to change. Right, right. right. It's, but in the, it's in our minutes. In the minutes, not in the charter, yeah. In the AFP. That's what Mike said. had some consistent. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it, it just shows that to the, pe the voters out there that we looked at the issue right. in great detail. Okay. It wasn't arbitrary numbers. Okay, on the recall, item three, um, the MML does not include recall in their uh, document, so uh, Raymore had 30% belt and 30% Blue Springs only had 12% of uh, the total number of qualified voters registered. Uh, Lee Summit actually words it different. They, they look at 30% of the votes cast for the office in the election at which the, that office was elected. That's so, probably. Well, yeah, but again, you so. run into the problem of, with that, you do run into the problem of the voter turnout that particular election. That's the only concern I have with that. But I have another concern. Especially when you're talking about it. Yeah, right. about individual. Yeah. The second right. concern I have, though, but I just I'm just putting it out there because yeah. there is a, at least one charter I know of that does take it differently. So um, I think it makes sense you know, not to admit, in the recalls because if you're talking about uh, an aldermanic seat, for instance, you're talking about only a fifth of the city, and uh, it, it's going to be peculiar. And we haven't distinguished that too. And number yeah. three, I noticed there's nothing in there about. Um, you know, it says 30% of the registered qualified voters. Well, you know, if we're talking about an alderman, it should be people in his or her ward. So we need to distinguish ward there. In addition, if we're talking about a citywide elected official, then you've got to make a, a distinction for that. And even if there's an appointed if individual, if, since if the recall passes, we did mention in here that it's an appointed as well, could be recalled, then they, yeah, I think, in my opinion, you got to make that citywide as well because that's a citywide position if it's a, you know, whatever you're appointed to. So um, those distinctions, I think, need to be put in Section 3 there. Appointed position citywide? Well, I was referring to the recall process that you need to have that number based off, for an alderman, for instance, based off his or hers ward as opposed to just right. a blanket statement. And then for the... You know the citywide elections, like you know city whether it be like police, mayor, whatever, mayor that and be city. I, citywide. Now I also would include that if it's an appointed position, it should be city, based off citywide numbers as well. Not if they're but appointed, appointed to, to a ward to replace an alderman issue. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, the exception yeah. of that. Yeah. Well, with the exception of that. Because that's usually what appointed well, are. Yeah. Though. Well, I'm referring to and other they, appointed. Well, positions but appointed. Too. Those people aren't elected no. first. Yeah, I know, but... The so they wouldn't have any constituent well, base. Well, and I understand that, but I guess in the wording I'm looking at here, from the, the recall section here, it says, any elected official... So, I, okay, I take that back. Because it says, any elected official... Pop, okay, not, I'm thinking of just appointed Even appointed on there. should... I mean, so I can, we can scratch that appointed part. If, if somebody's appointed... I was just saying, if somebody was like, well, I really don't... We don't like this well, person appointed for says, park board or whatever. I don't know. Proper, proper. Popular. And that's what it said. It said two elected office, and that's why I, yeah. so yeah, I come back check on that. Recall would only be on an elected office. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, just for the okay. And I was just trying to be consistent with what we previously had, and I 
forgot to read the section that said any elected official right at the front. So, so anyway. Because if he was filling the office that it was previously. Yeah, it'd be either appointed city appointed, right. like in terms mm -hmm. of alderman or whatever. But we do need to make the distinction between ward and citywide and then determine whatever that number might be. But so you're wanting to leave it up to the individual ward and not the... Well, for the board of aldermen, yeah. I mean, yeah. why should people in ward five determine my fate in ward two? Well, for one reason is because whatever whatever reason somebody is upset with that alderman, mm -hmm. whatever he does or she does, it's a citywide deal. The city. And I agree. Citywide. But it, like, for instance, ward two elected Jim and I. You know, ward two is the ones elected. Ward two should have the sole power to get rid of us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think otherwise, you know, you can have right. all sorts of issues. You People know, my, our, here's the, the idea. Local, we represent right. the city as a whole, but we also represent Ward 2. I mean, we always have more of a focus but on that particular you, ward. If whatever you've done affects the city in a negative way, mm -hmm. it, it's a city thing. Well, it's I, a city I, and I, I agree with you on that end, but, and I will say this, and I, I, do, I do understand what you're saying on that. Um, but if, 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 let's say I did something that affected the city in a negative way, wouldn't the people in my ward want to recall me anyway on that? You see, you see what I'm getting at? I don't know. Maybe I mean, not. Well, otherwise, yeah, maybe otherwise not. people from different parts of the city would be I'm just, recalling I'm just worried everybody. about subversion. Yes. Ward 5 or Ward 4 or Ward 3 or yeah. 1 could subvert the democratic will exactly. of Ward 2. But unless if I was, you, do you see what I'm saying? I guess. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Unless you did something saying. really great for Ward 2, that affected all the other wards, but it was only for Ward 2, Ward 2 wouldn't recall you. Everybody else might be yeah. really ticked then off Jim at Major, you. Then Jim he just focuses on Ward 2 roads, well, not my roads. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I mean, yeah. you do something that's I don't so think you can separate it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think you should. So I, I agree with Jason because you run in your ward, you knock on the doors in your ward, you talk to those people from your ward, they know you best. So if not so after you're elected, one, not after you're elected. elected. People more yeah. two, three, four, and five yeah, don't they like do. them. They can just take up a tissue gear. I, mean, I don't I, even know I, if it's legal to do it the other way. I oh, mean, I think you create you an issue. Like, yeah. again, my attitude is this, is that the people in Ward 2 elected me. I'm not a citywide position. I was just elected by Ward 2. Why should the people in Ward 3 have the, I mean, you could not get one signature from one person in my ward with the way this is written uh -huh. and get me out of there. I mean, I have a problem with that. Well, I mean, if it if it goes through, because it's the city whole city voting on it, yeah, through this particular through the way this is written. If you elect them, you, I if think you're not you electing just, them. You, how you, can you recall them? You subvert very the democratic okay. will, I think, yeah, of the people in those wards. So you really don't represent your wards at all. Yeah, you don't. So in this case, we should all be at large. We should all be at large then. Sure. Or if you're this, we all be at large. And generally speaking, politically. Politically speaking, when, when you have somebody, for instance, Jason, if he were to run citywide and I were to run citywide in another type of race, and I, and I would say I represent Ward 1, he represents Ward 2, he's going to draw stronger in Ward 2 than he will in Ward 1. I will draw stronger in Ward 1 because that's my face. That's where I know there's the people. So it's, it, is, it, is, it does come down to a very parochial type of thing where you are talking about the people that you represent. That's your job. That's well, I mean, here's the deal. Put it this way. Governor, okay, yeah. we have a recall in the state of Missouri for the governor. Should the people in Kansas have the power to recall the governor of Missouri? Well, that's extreme. well I know, but it's, a sim <laughs> it's, it's similar, though. I mean, the no, point is... We don't even vote. We can't vote there. Yeah. Well, I know. That's the, that's that's the see, point that's, I'm exactly. making. That's, that's the point. The, that's, the, that's the point. That is specifically the point. Well, well, yeah, we can't recall the... We can't recall the, the state representatives from other... District. Exactly. Right. There, that's a better example. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, Jim. We can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we can't. Re I can't recall, um, you know, Will Kraus because yeah, because he's least done. He's not here anymore. Well, does anybody have an example of a charter that's written that way? Because I haven't seen one yet. Well, well we can write our own. Well, I understand. Okay. But I mean, yeah. we had to go from something. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're cutting new ground. Yeah, we can write our own. We don't have to go. <laughs> but, but, yeah, there are examples because of charters that have people at large. There are. Okay. I mean, there are differences in charters. Yeah, that's the thing. Because if, if you had a charter that one is in large, then obviously that wording's not necessary. And they're different size cities. They're not the same. Yeah. We're going to make ours better.
Is Lee Summit a large? No. No, they're fine. Yeah, they're they're independent. The charter says. Jason, do you need to change wording in this, or are you suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting that. Just let me know. Okay. <laughs> I guess well, here's what. <laughs> if we're done discussing it, I can make a suggestion, maybe. Yes, please. Okay. Um, we haven't talked about the number yet, so let's just ignore that for a second. But it would be qualified voters. Voters. Um, so pretty much what you want to do is you want to add an additional sentence like, um, for a alderman, and, and you may want to reword this after yeah. I write it, uh, for an alderman, um, this, it, something to the effect about qualified voters from their particular ward. From um, automatic ward. Recall can yeah. only be initiated well, from the Continue what you were saying. I, you may have something Jason, to that. Recall may only be initiated from the ward. And, and decided. Recall may only be initiated and, and decided. decided from voters, qualified voters, within the particular award that alderman represents, the alderman in question represents, or something to that effect. Well, I think you're going to have to separate out citywide. Yes. Well, then, yeah. And well, then it, separate, yeah. I mean. And that's for fine. aldermen. As yeah, you so if you put aldermen, so that, that's the situation. Even 30% of the total qualified voters is fair. Right. That's a pretty high number. For that ward, yeah. No, not that ward, of the city. No. If the city is going to recall them, it should be the 30% oh. well, of the total right. qualified voters of that city. Ward. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, but, I, but I, well, I guess what I'm wanting to do is I want to break it down by ward. By ward. Because again, you know, this like. This is city, and we're you're talking about. I'll be, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I didn't elect, if I was, you know, I didn't elect um, Pat Ertz. I didn't. I did not vote for him. He's, you know, another ward. I don't think I should have the power to vote to recall him because I never voted for him. In the I couldn't even vote for him legally in the first place. And so that's what I'm getting at is that, you know, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, we, whatever number we decide, I'm fine with the percentage wise, but I do think there needs to be a distinction about aldermen and then the citywide so positions. But in, in, in recall, recall, they're either recall citywide or by war. Correct. Yeah. But the way this is worded, recall petition well, shall be signed by qualified voters for that office. For that voting district. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, voting that district. office. Voting district. Okay, the last sentence I've added he has a sound. On. For voting an alderman, district. recall may only be initiated and decided by the qualified voters in the ward that Isn't alderman that that represents. Says? Yeah, or, or no. you could just have what, what Jim just said, just label it as their voting district. So 30% of the total number of qualified voters registered to vote at the last regular municipal election in their voting district. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> it's already there. A recall petition shall be signed by qualified, qualified voters for that office. Right. The number equal to, it's already there. Well, that if we had this whole discussion, maybe not everybody's going to catch it in the future. So five. maybe we can just add those last few words. But it's, I mean, it's already there. For you that office. A qualified voter and for that office. So they can't do that to you unless they're a qualified voter. But they should only be, they should only well, be called by that district. But that's what... For that's that what yeah, that, I mean, mean what, that's, that's what Mike's saying. That would cover the city, says. or it would cover you, but it or seems you, a little bit else in their So we can always qualify it area. specifically. I mean, their, their particular war. But it's not obvious is the problem. And well, we just had this whole discussion of why it wasn't obvious. I don't know how much more obvious it can be. Can we highlight in that office? Because it is for that office. Okay. So, so just I mean, forget the, everything we just went through. <laughs> okay, awesome. God. I well, I tried to get things. it in there before you went that far, but... Thank you, Michael. There, like, guys, keep talking. <laughs> Speak All right. louder. Speak him up. All right, let's, let's finish this up and then take a break. So... <laughs> three are we voting on three? Um, <laughs> the, the question then be, still becomes, do we want to do 30%? Are less well, for the total number of qualified voters well, registered. Have we settled the, the alderman issue? Yes. 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 Mike fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike made me look Mike fixed kind it. of. Well, he read the we're no, I'm no, not <laughs> I'm just trying to. <laughs> well, I was confused on What it says is a recall fun. petition shall be signed by qualified voters for that office. Okay. I mean, that fixes it right there. That's what it means. Is if, if it's an aldermanic, then it's there. If it's a mayoral or a... I didn't see it. 30% of the what now? Are we yeah, doing we got to do... We got to... I mean... <laughs> picking on me now. I know. Okay, what's 30% of the last qualified election? 30% of the... 30, I'm used to it. 30% of 16... 5,060. So that's more than you'll have voted in the election. 
the 30 percent well, but it but, doesn't it doesn't relate to how many people the, actually the vote. Deal, though, it's in getting the, the in the ward for instance it's going to be a problem you want to put the recall just so high that it doesn't happen here's, at here's, all. here's the deal the point of having recall in here though you want it to actually be able to happen. what's 30 percent of like 550 can you just give me that 30 percent of 550 yeah there's a reason why i'm asking this question 550 because that's the number in 165. the 165 right? 165 so if you had 30 percent it'd take 165 to get me Recalled if you base it off 30% in the ward. Now, I'm not talking about citywide office. Citywide office, 30% is a really high number. I get it. But if you have 30% based off your alderman in the ward. Is that how it's yeah, you're, yeah, but you're going by, you're going by okay. the last missile. I know, but. Just checking. <laughs> and that's what it says here at the last regular missile election. Oh. It's needed. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I see. I just want to put some numbers behind some of this stuff. Right. So, so you think about it. 30%, your 5,000 numbers So maybe the threshold should be different. Well, no, the 5,000 would be right if it was a citywide city -wide. election. Yeah. So the threshold should maybe, in my opinion, should be maybe different for wards versus citywide. <laughs> because it says for that office. Citywide, for a citywide office. Yeah. And then for aldermen. Bring it up. For the ward, bring it up higher. Isn't yeah, that I agree. Michael said. It's written as. All right, how many qualified voters are there in Ward 3? It's not saying Five. anything. Ward 3, Ward 2. Well, it's basically delineated by um, equal numbers of voters in each ward. So if you 6, have 16, 8, 67, you divide it by 5. Um, roughly 3,370. No, yeah. no. No, no, you used voters. Registered voters. Right, right. So qualified 16, voters registered, registered votes. Right. So that's registered what I did. Oh, okay. That's right. what It'll I go up more. Okay. Yeah. 30 so, because don't they, don't base it off voters, because that changes. Well, no, no, it is. registered voters. Well, registered voters. I'm not, okay, I'm not I'm so talking about registered voters, not people who actually voted in the last municipal. Right. Yeah. yeah. Each right. ward theoretically has roughly three thousand four hundred voters. Right. right. Registered voters 100. that vote. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess. Or, no, just registered voters. So, 16, 30, 17, 17, 17, 17, so what's thirty percent of that? About a thousand. One thousand twelve. So if you base it off registered voters as opposed to actual voters from the last municipal election. Right. Okay. All right. So, I mean, that puts a number high enough it does. for you in your ward. So you well, can just I, leave it 30% Again, I just, I'm both. worried about, you know, the good. threshold being too low. Well, the number of recall oh, votes that yeah. fail yeah. happens a lot when they have recall electors and they, they're not recalled. And it's very expensive. Yeah. It's expensive to go well, through that. Well, because each of these things, you're going to have to have a special election. I'm fine, as, I'm fine as long as you base the number off registered voters again. Yeah, we're good. And, and I'd be curious, if you have a recall election, let's say, for the Albany Ward 2, is it still $20,000 for a recall election? Or is it just one-fifth of that? I don't know. Well, because think about it, just like three locations, or maybe not that, maybe one location would be helpful. Yeah, they only have one point. And it depends if it's a special I election or not. Know. You know, it could be I don't know. time I long to... Just questions. Yeah, these are all questions. That. And that's the Jackson County Election Board maybe to help decide that one. I imagine. Are they, are they may, like it may... Yeah. Well, but the point of that question is, you know, whether or not they're <laughs> setting the, the number <laughs> high enough to, to make sure they're not just... Right. Yeah, and if you base it off registered voters, it'd take roughly a thousand per ward, too, which I think is an appropriate number. Right. Well, that's going to raise the question that you probably don't get a thousand in a ward that vote. That's right. Right, but, but they I don't mean, have to two vote. Different numbers, you just gotta go yeah. get a number signature. Yeah, they just gotta get yeah, Only 550 voted in my uh, voted, voted okay. in the last election what was it in, 2005? in April 2013. I don't think but we have those numbers. if you're only getting those people, then how are you going to get those people? Raytown is only so big it hasn't well, been well, well, attracted I mean, any no, time recently, I mean, so it's, it's, it's roughly only Ward 3 people. Oh, I don't means know. means that you have to go door to door. You just know you wrote us three. Right. Right. With Ward 3 okay. Because, I mean, it's not like you're going to go to the grocery store and get all your Ward yeah. 3 people. Yeah, you have to go door to door. So that means it's going to, yeah, like you're handing here, I think it's going to be, it's a tough process. And it should be so It should be. Exactly. I'm going to waste 20 grand on personal politics. I mean, I don't mind with somebody really if you have somebody, if you get a thousand signatures against you in an election, you're, you're, 500, you're done. Yeah. We're going to have 500 turn out. There, there's no way you could overcome that. Yeah. And people are going to sign their name when you can see that they signed that they don't want you and then you're finished. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, you've kind of done a disservice to whoever has a petition against them. Um, 
I, I, didn't work I don't hard know. Enough. I, I, I kind of get the feeling that, that it, it sounds like let's set this to where nobody will ever use it. That's what uh -huh. it sounds like to me. No, I don't think so, Greg. I don't think you look at it that way. That's what you just said. That's exactly what you just said. So nobody will use it. I'm curious, but Steve, did you see any other any other numbers besides thirty percent? I'm just you don't have it written in here. The only the only other number that I saw that different was Blue Springs had twelve. They based theirs on. On the qualified voters registered to vote at the last meeting. Oh, actually. I looked at the wrong thing. One moment. 15%. And then for recall, you put 1,500 registered voters Perfect. for at large office officials right. and 500 foreign wards. When people find out how hard it is to get these signatures, most people don't have a clue as to what it's like to go out and have to, to campaign. Yeah. And that's basically what they're going to have to do, exactly the same thing. They're going to have to have well, like, a real yeah. reason. Well, like yeah, Charlotte mentioned earlier, she's like, look, it has to be this ward, so you have to go, honestly, door to door. Yeah, because it, it can't be, oh, I'm standing out the grocery store and get all the registered yeah. voters to sign it. Because you don't like ward three people. They'll go, oh, yeah, sure, let me sign. Right. And find out they're in ward. Right. Or three and leave some of them. Or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, I do think that it's obvious that if the MML doesn't even put it in there, they think that there have been times when it's been misused in the first place. And I think that's what they're trying to avoid, mm -hmm. is abuse. I don't and and I did talk to Dave Markinson about this when I talked to him last week. And he just wanted to make sure that we, had put, we would put the number high enough, is what he told me. High enough for what? That you, it, it was still attainable if absolutely necessary kind of thing. And not abused. But not abused, exactly. I don't think you'll ever see it attempted. What if the number were closer to the number of people that voted? Because the reality is... You don't want to compromise on the table because if you, if you do the math here, 15% is close to the number that you're talking about elected. You, you know, you, you had to actually vote. Yeah. And if, if you have the total number of voters, presuming that they didn't all vote for you, yeah, um, it may all be four to five. But here's, the, here's the issue, <laughs> and I and I I'm, I'm I'm all about making a compromise here on this, obviously. But here's the thing: it's so much easier if I had everybody who told me to come out and vote for me in April 2013. I would have had a thousand votes. That's the thing: it's so much easier to go there, and say, hey, sign this petition here. You know, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, and I'm not even joking. I was even vote. though I won in the landslide, I was disappointed because I was like, well, where was this guy? This guy. And then when I got my voter history list, you know, it's like all these people just didn't even come out and vote, and the, they just don't come out in the April vote. Same way with me. Well, you yeah. could put 10% of the people who voted who actually voted in the last election in that war. That's true. No, and then you'd have like, you'd well, have like 70 people. You want to make it realistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the simple figure make it more realistic. Percentage. I mean, we could do 25% or 20%. And, and a lot of the, the spring elections, when you have only all of them run, sometimes you may only have three or 400 votes cast at all. And if, if you have, that was me. Even, if you even have 350, at 10%, that's 35 signatures. Yeah. But, if but if you base it off, based based off, we're basing off registered, though. Recall, yeah. And they were very adamant about it. They'd show up to vote. That's the thing, though. We, we got it based off registered, so we're not worried about certain turnouts of election right. cycles. Right. And I, that's the way it needs to be because every other charter has been consistent with that. I guess the question is, is do we keep it 30 percent? We lowered it a little bit. 25 percent would be roughly a fourth of 33, so yeah. you're looking at 820, maybe 850 signatures. Well, I think we're going to keep it 30. For what? Keep it at 30, yeah. If someone's serious about going after it, then they can go after it. Well, and again, I, I, I mean, to me. Don't argue a reduction on my account. Okay. Well, like what, what are we doing? 25 and 30 like percent of what now? Of registered voters. Of the 3,300 well, 3, 3, and 60 that you oh, had. Oh, the 3,3. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, too, though, that, I mean, I, I, I would want to put the number high enough that. Uh, gotcha. 
it wouldn't be abused. It wouldn't be abused, but not so low that we might get two or three in the next election so and then decide we have to amend the charter to raise it. 25% is 844, 30% is 1,012. See, I'll pull on 30%, see how. Okay, yeah. How many, how many people are good with the 30? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm I yeah, like so. Yeah. But I mean, we can. Right. <coughs> yes. So, for instance, <laughs> it would take a little, it'd take a thousand, it'd take a thousand votes. Well, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. It, it'd be citywide. So, I mean, then you're talking 30 percent of 16 something, so over 5,000 signatures. So, I mean, it, that first sentence says for that office, so it means right. city or so. Anybody All right. So we we're leaving it written as it is with 30 percent in there. Yeah, you'd need five voting registered voters. Uh, the total number of qualified no, 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 no. voters registered to vote. No. Yeah, Keeping just in as mind in that if you wanted to recall the mayor, that would take over 5,000 signatures. <coughs> just FYI. Yeah, well, there. that's... Okay. That's a lot of people. Wow. That's way more that's going to show up in at any election. Uh, any, not a turnout of Any election. It's the same, same arguments. Uh, yeah. Just saying. Because you're, you're that, you're getting people, you can stand out at high and get people. Right. To sign the thing there. Yeah. Whereas the alderman has to make sure that, that they go door to door to get their people yeah. saying, I hate Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that way? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So, so, it, so with the with the thirty percent number per ward, it'd be roughly a thousand signatures. Right. Just over a thousand. Five thousand for the city. And five thousand for a citywide office. Five thousand sixty or something. Yeah. Can someone motion something? All right. Who we have a motion. Have Anything in particular? Second. All right. Thank you, both. Any other discussion before we vote? All right, we'll take a vote. Okay. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Yeah. Janet Emerson. Yes. Mike McDonough. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker. Yes. Greg Walters. No. Ted Bowman. Yes. Lisa Emerson Abstain. Mark Moore. Yes. Charlotte Melson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Ten to one, motion carries. All right, let's take a quick break. Let's be back at eight twenty, please. That's three minutes. All right, eight twenty-two.